welcome back to the SEO Weekly, where queries are weird, advice is controversial, and everything depends. I'm your host, Garrett Sussman of iPoll Rank, and each week I cover everything that's going on in the world of SEO. We're talking Google updates, articles, webinars, podcasts, tools, features, you name it, I'm on it. You know, for a lot of people, SEO isn't the most exciting thing, but honestly, I geek out over this stuff. I absolutely love it. So if you're into it as well, and you enjoy this content, please take a moment, sub subscribe to the channel, give me a like, leave a comment, let me know how you're feeling about all this. But this week, explosion. Explosion after weeks and weeks and weeks of talking about the helpful content update and frankly getting a little sick of it, Google decides to drop a whole bunch of updates going into the end of 2022. If you are paying attention and you are in e-commerce, for instance, hold on to your butts. Because, well, first off, as of last week, September core update rolls out. Like out of nowhere, no sort of, you know, kind of heads up. September 12th, it's like, bam, next two weeks, Google core update. Now, one of the things with the core updates is it's not like you can navigate and try to change anything right away, nor would you want to. It's just that Google is adjusting all the weights of all the factors in the algorithm that ultimately provides, in theory, better search results. So the core algorithm updates tend to be a little more volatile. Uh, that said, this is in addition to the helpful content update that is that continuous signal. Uh, we have also we also know that there is a product a fifth product reviews update that will be rolling out in the next few weeks or months, probably before the holiday season. Although, if we're being honest, we are in the middle of it right now. Speaking of e-commerce and buying, what are you going to buy for the holidays? Well. Last week, Google announced another update, which is an expanded eligibility for uh, free listings of your products as well as product snippets. How does this work? Well, previously, you needed to have your products in the Google Merchant Center in order to show up for those pretty enhancements. So whether that's like popular products or actually getting, you know, reviews and pricing and availability as like kind of a little annotation, a rich snippet for your products, you need to be in the Google Merchant Center. Well, now you don't. Now you just need the structured data on your page. And so... As mentioned, this is both the product snippets and the merchant listing experiences. If your structured data is accurate and well-maintained, then it can show up in the organic listings for free. So that's bam, huge. That said, you should probably still be in the Google Merchant Center. It doesn't actually cost you any money to be on there. And you can have a little more control over those product feeds. But this expanded eligibility is huge. And along with that... Google has actually updated the product structure data documentation. It's comp comprehensive. They have everything, including you know ratings, the new pros and cons that you can add, uh, shipping, availability, price drops. They show you code examples of how to implement it. Make sure that you're doing it properly. Definitely, if you're in e-commerce check out this page, ensure that you've updated your structured data and your schema for all of your product attributes. They're adding new things as well, including like color. So this is going to be really important, especially leaning into the holidays. And to be honest, most people are already buying. They're already buying for the holiday season, for Black Friday, for Cyber Monday. So you should have done this yesterday. In fact, a little plug to the webinar that we hosted on Apple Rank, myself and the director of SEO, Zach Chahalis. We it was Black Friday SEO, what you should have done yesterday. We ran through a whole bunch of different tactics and strategies, including updating your product pages with uh, you know, visual imagery for you know people who are using like Google Lens. We went through pre-technical audits. The one big takeaway that Zach recommended that I think is really smart, even if you are, you know, too late for Black Friday updates, which is doing code freezes, making sure that your developer team or your ITs aren't implementing a 
bunch of changes to your website that could result in disaster. For instance, adding a uh, directive in robot.txt file to de-index your entire site. And it's happened. Anyway, you can check out the whole replay of the webinar, a uh, full hour of meaty, delicious e-commerce Black Friday content. Find that link in the description notes. So in addition to all of those product eligibility enhancements and the updates to the product data structure page, Google Search Console has also added a product snippet report. So you can actually see the performance of your product snippets. Two really helpful things that are in this report are why a certain item might be invalid due to the data structure. So like is your aggregate rating um, not specified or the offers not specified. Additionally, you can look at what needs to be improved for item appearance. So these are additional attributes, whether it's like SKU or global identifier provided or even missing the description. That's an awesome report that's now available in the Google Search Console. Another report that they actually released is this HTTPS report. So privacy issues, security issues have been an issue for the longest time. A few years ago, Google actually said as kind of a ranking factor that you want to have an HTTPS version of your site. Um, if it's HTTP, it's not as secure. It doesn't have that certificate. And it, that's problematic for a user. And so now you have a report in Google Search Console that will allow you to see where certain URLs are not um, safe and secure using the HTTPS. So whether like Google has not evaluated it or if it's marked with a canonical tag or if it has an invalid certificate, now you can use this report to actually address that issue, which is really helpful because it, it's pretty major when it comes to being indexed and visible and discoverable on Google. One thing in the world of local SEO, hat tip to the queen of local, Joy Hawkins, but basically Google updated their documentation when it comes to incentivizing someone to remove a negative review. Reviews are really valuable digital currency for local SEO. They impact your rankings. They impact when someone decides to use your business. Google reviews are huge. I'm biased because I work for a review company, Back in the day, that said, they really are important. So you obviously cannot incentivize asking someone if they left a bad review being like, hey, here, have a discount or a coupon or a free whatever to remove your Google reviews. It's technically against their terms and conditions now. So pay attention. Again, don't do that. Speaking of local, did you know that local search results are actually a slightly different algorithm? And... Not to be left out, local search apparently had its own algorithm update that happened around September 7th on the local search forum with Joy Hawkins and Sterling Sky Agency. Uh, a bunch of local SEOs were, were popping in and saying, yeah, looking at some fluctuations. Adam DeFrisco said, notice that, you know, the listings on search and maps dropped dramatically, visits to the websites and calls dropped dramatically. Jason Brown chimed in and saw something the same to the same effect with some service area businesses. So uh, local search was not spared of this algorithm update. And that does make sense. While it's separate from the core update and the product reviews update, with all these e-commerce results kind of flying into local, I'm not shocked that they're trying to improve that as well. And finally, on September 28th at around 1 p.m., Google is hosting Search On 22. Uh, basically, it's an annual short little mini virtual conference where Google gives you all the insights in terms of major search features and algorithm updates that they've been working on. Last year, they did around a lot around Google Lens and multi-search. Uh, this year, we'll probably see some more of the same thing. Book it on your calendar, free event, always really fun if you like to geek out over search. And speaking of September 28th, that is, as I mentioned last week, people supporting SEOs. We're still receiving nominations. I wanted to make sure that I got that in there again, that if you want to nominate an SEO who you think is crushing it in the industry, who deserves a little recognition, please so fill out the nomination form, make a little quick, like 15 to 30 second video to, to give that person a shout out. We'll be publishing on September 30th. Uh, so get that in there. Excited to produce that. So much fun last year. Lots of great uh, nominations.
Who doesn't appreciate a good John Mueller trolling? Uh, so he tweeted the other day, and it's hard not to laugh, but just that www is a subdomain, which it is. Uh, technically, it is. When the World Wide Web was first started, um, it was part of the technology that had to do with different ports, and it just became this kind of trend, especially with different CMSs, would set you up with www, but technically, it's a subdomain. You know, and so it should be treated as such. Uh, most folks at this point would redirect all to the main domain without hit the prefix, the subdomain. But uh, John Mueller decided to troll us all and start a conversation. And the uh, replies are hilarious. So, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, check it out. Enjoyable. Emily Brady did a stellar presentation at MozCon uh, over the summer, and now she take that presentation and created a full blog post on the Moz blog, all about how to build awesome location pages, which is critical for local SEO. So she runs through like everything that should be included on these location pages, like everything from like the paragraph form content and location attributes, and features, and staff profiles, and hours, and name, address, uh, phone number, NAP. I almost said profile, but NAP stands for name, address, phone number, uh, photos, you know, reviews, products, and inventory, nearby locations, everything that you can think of, FAQs that you should have on your location page. And she just lays it out so effectively. Awesome article. Emily, if you have tons of locations or anything that needs a location page, this is how you do it. Check out this post. So really interesting article on Search Engine Land by Mike Grehan talking all about EAT, the history of it, how the algorithm has updated and included these types of signals over time, uh, kind of talking about how we went from like text-based algorithms focused on keywords to link-based algorithms focused on passing authoritativeness through who you're linking to, these different citations and co-citations, which ultimately kind of evolves today to entity-based relevance topic modeling. Really, he gets into the nitty gritty of machine learning and AI and how like the Florida update really established a lot of these kinds of relationships of expertise. It's, he breaks it down a lot better than I can and how all the different interlinking um, builds that sort of authority. But very much an article, if you don't know the history of EAT and how these signals kind of come to be, his inferences from Google's updates, check out the article. Really cool. Maz's Whiteboard Fridays are back. Uh, Lydia Fonte did one a few weeks ago. Then Ross Simmons did one last week. And well, actually last Friday, Crystal Carter did one. And she's kind of been talking about this theme all around visual search, which I find personally fascinating with Google Lens and multi-search. She breaks down in the Whiteboard Friday all about how visual search works in terms of images and entities and how you know, people put that information in and then how Google kind of spits out the visual results and why it's so important for all of your kind of in real life sorts of results, specifically even in terms of like screenshots that you use on your phone or anything that you're searching for. Visual search is critical. Crystal does a fantastic job explaining it. Check out her Whiteboard Friday video on Moz. So I'm not sure how I haven't recommended opinionated SEO opinions by the gray dot company, but uh, Tori Gray and Sam Torres and Bagoom Kaya are absolutely crushing when they put these interviews out. Really great interviews with expert SEOs in our industry. And last week's episode was no exception. So they had Paige Ford of Netflix come and talk about in-house SEO at an enterprise level. What does that kind of day-to-day -day look like? What were some of the biggest SEO fires that she's put out? And how to speak to the C-suite, which I think is really valuable. You know, they don't necessarily care about you know, page speed insights about the website or, or bounce rate. They want to get to the brass tacks of revenue and some of those higher level metrics and, and themes and strategies when it comes to SEO. Great interview. Definitely check out that one and some of the past ones that they've had because they're all fantastic. Speaking of bounce rate, uh, Priti Gupta did a great, you know, roundup of SEO experts all about how to improve your bounce rate for packed, packed Anyway, one thing I do appreciate about Priti is originally there was, it was a little, um, still is a little male heavy in terms of the experts. Uh, and I was like, Priti, you know, we should have more women participate in a roundup like this, especially because our own Zach Chahalas uh, participated in that. And I was like, you know, we, we should get some, some females. And so she, she did the work. She, she, 
added six more uh, women to it. And I really appreciate that. Lots of great advice and, and recommendations across the board when it comes to improving the bounce rate. Obviously, that's not like directly tied to SEO. It tends to be more of a CRO aspect of things. But all in all, if you know, ultimately, if you're driving growth organic traffic to your website, you want to make sure they converse and people stay there and improve the content. And so uh, trying to improve your bounce rate is one way to do that. So check out that article. It's so interesting how you'll see all this great content consistently, consistently, consistently. And then you'll have people who like pop up out of nowhere and generate a ton of great content like in batches. Well, Mike Ginley is back again with another free awesome resource. This time he connects BigQuery to Google Search Console to allow you to export and produce this great Google Data Studio template that surfaces like all of the keywords because with the Google Search Console API, that will have a lot more data than just what you'll see in the report. So check out this report. It's free. Uh, Mike is crushing it with these free tools that are really useful for people to, you know, use and 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 do SEO things. Awesome work. And, and Mike's a great follow as well. Check it out. And on the iPoll Rank blog, our own Daniel Antos wrote a great article all about how to measure and fix poor content performance. You know what's happened when you create a ton of content and you're looking at the metrics and it just isn't producing in the way that you want or need it to. Now, first off, what does that mean? What metrics are you looking at? Danielle dives into you know traffic, conversions, quality of conversions, engagement rate in the context specifically of GA4, which remember we did that awesome rankable podcast interview with Chris Seiden last year. And now that we know that Universal Analytics is being sunset and GA4 is going to take over probably in 2023, unless they delay the actual sunsetting. Uh, it's stuff that you need to know. Not only that, Danielle kind of goes into different ways that you can improve that content, which is very reminiscent of our own uh, content repurposing uh, link equity rebalancing webinar that Kyle and I did a few months ago. Either way, awesome post. Definitely check it out. A lot of great insights from Danielle. Also, uh, last week, I had a really awesome interview on the Rankable Podcast with Monty Cano. We talked all about SEO project management and execution, specifically at an enterprise level. I love talking with Monty. She had so many great insights in how to, you know deal with these projects that where the scope creep can get really excessive and you want to keep things moving along and focused so you can execute on different parts of your website. Great podcast episode you should check out. Next week, or well, I guess in a few few days, BB Raven is joining me to talk all about link building. It is maybe one of the most entertaining, fun interviews that I've done in a hot minute. Uh, we there, There's some surprises. There's some su surprises. Like, how do you get links for uh, a zombie survivalist store or, you know, for a, uh, a dad's kid's toy, kid bedding, sleeping, because, you know, trying to, to help out my daughter. Anyway, check out both of those episodes. Keep your eyes peeled for the BB episode coming out on Wednesday. That's it another episode of the SEO Weekly in the books. Remember to check out the Black Friday SEO webinar. Um, the link is in the description there. I appreciate you sticking with me, watching these episodes. I hope you find it informational, educational, entertaining. That's what I'm going for. As always, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, give us a like, drop us a comment. Please share on the social media. Got to ask because that helps all the algorithms. Really do appreciate you and we will catch you next week. I'm Garrett Sussman of Ipole Rank Agency. Getting the SEO on. I think that's the catchphrase.